we want to evaluate the limits at infinity. We have the limit of the quantity one minus two e to the x divided by the quantity negative three e to the x plus six. Let's first check the form of, let's first check the form of the limit. As x approaches infinity, one is not affected by x. And then we have minus two times e to the x. e to the x approaches infinity. As x approaches infinity, but because we have negative two times e to the x, negative two times e to the x approaches negative infinity as x approaches infinity. Similarly, in the denominator, e to the x approaches infinity as x approaches infinity, but because we have negative three times e to the x, negative three times e to the x approaches negative infinity as x approaches infinity. And then again, six is not affected by x. So we have the indeterminate form of negative infinity divided by negative infinity, which means we'll have to change the form of this function to determine the limit. And we'll take a look at two methods for doing this. First, if negative two e to the x is approaching negative infinity, the one has almost no impact, and we can ignore the one. Similarly, in the denominator, if negative three e to the x is approaching negative infinity, the plus six has almost no impact, and we can ignore the plus six. Which means the given limit is equal to the limit of just negative two e to the x divided by negative three e to the x as x approaches infinity. Notice in this form we can simplify e to the x divided by e to the x simplifies to one, leaving us with just the limit of positive two thirds as x approaches infinity, which is equal to two thirds. So this would be one approach we could take to determine the limit. But let's take a look at a second approach. Remember when we had polynomials in the numerator and denominator, we divided every term by the highest power of x in the denominator. Well, in this case, because negative three e to the x approaches negative infinity, what we can do is divide everything by e to the x. So let's also show this method. We would have the limit of one divided by e to the x minus two e to the x divided by e to the x, all divided by negative three e to the x divided by e to the x plus six divided by e to the x as x approaches infinity. Now we simplify. One divided by e to the x doesn't simplify. Minus two e to the x divided by e to the x is just two divided by negative three e to the x divided by e to the x is negative three and then we have plus six divided by e to the x as x approaches infinity. One divided by e to the x approaches zero as x approaches infinity because the numerator is one and the denominator is increasing without bound. Similarly, six divided by e to the x also approaches zero. So now we're just left with negative two divided by negative three, which also gives us positive two thirds. So either approach is a valid method for determining the limit as x approaches infinity. And now for the second limit, we have the limit of the same function, but now as x approaches negative infinity. Let's begin by checking the form. One is not affected by x, and then we have minus two times e to the x. e to the x approaches zero as x approaches negative infinity, which we can verify from the graph on the right, where here we have the graph of y equals e to the x. Notice as x approaches negative infinity, the function values or y values approach zero. So if e to the x approaches zero as x approaches negative infinity, well so does two times e to the x. So two e to the x approaches zero. In the denominator, similarly, negative three e to the x also approaches zero as x approaches negative infinity, and then six is not affected by x. So if the two exponential terms are approaching zero as x approaches negative infinity, Without changing the form of the function, we can see the limit is going to equal one divided by six or one sixth. I hope you found this helpful.